Hey, how's it going, y'all? It is Moist Andy, and today what I'm going to be teaching you is another video tutorial series on how to 3D model using Blender. Now, since we left off, I finished up this model with the mesh, and I got my high res on this first layer, which I'll be baking the details into this lower poly mesh. Let's move to my second layer, and since we left, I just added some nice concentric edge loops right in this neck part here and I fixed the faces around the bridge of the nose and the cheeks and the chin and the ears and and I added more edge loops onto the tail that's about all I really did since we left now at this point in time take this object into edit mode hit A to select all your vertices and then you go face and smooth so it's a nice and smooth texture this is great this is what we want now I'm just gonna apply this shrink wrap modifier right now and as you see as soon as I did that it creates a couple of gaps right in the center vertices so just move this number on your mirror a little higher until those gaps start to go away and in edit mode you could you could get everything fixed up by hand like such as this one there and then maybe on the tip of the tail check it out alt home with the 3d cursor so you could pan around look around a little bit and see like on the crowded parts of the vertices in the middle of the face we got a couple things that can be adjusted just slightly just a little bit so what I'm actually going to do is delete this one and like just merge that one and that one together and then you go into wireframe and check it out we got this stray polygon so get rid of that triangle and that's fine that's gonna work now I go back into the uh, the I start to make the seams here like Alt and right click will allow you to select these adjacent edges right down the middle. I want that to be a seam. So I go to edges, mark the seam. And then I select like around this eye, make another seam here, and join it up underneath there. So we mark the seam of the eye right here just for now. And I think I'm probably going to need seams like separating the ear part of this thing just so that these textures are not as stretched out around the whole entire ear. We want this to be a separated texture. Mark that as a seam. Since my X mirror is still turned on, these seams are going to be copied over when I apply the modifier later. So along the back edge of the ear we can split that that island just along this aspect of it with another seam and then I go onto this edge loop that's on the elbow and I alt shift alt right click the ankle one as well just to mark those both as seams and now I go like in the inside of this foot where you can't really see very easily that part and I go all along the underside of that foot make sure all these vertices are a seam because otherwise the textures that are on the toes there they're gonna be a little stretched if this is not marked as a seam so that's pretty good there that's gonna work edge mark seam. Do the same on the back foot. You can always alt home with that 3D cursor right there just so that you can see exactly how you're panning around. Really nice. Just mark the underside of this hind paw right there. Mark as a seam all along there because this, this part of the model you don't very you don't see very easily so it doesn't necessarily need a lot of resolution and we could separate it off from the rest of the toes and stuff which are going to need more resolution so 
that's all good now I just want to make for right now to hit A and I'm going to go ahead and bring up my UV image editor we'll get started making the normal map right now so since we need to do that we'll hit the plus sign and just create a new bitmap right here with a, a normal information on it 1024 by 1024 pixels is great for this purpose for a model this size because it's only about what like 30 inches tall and it's not that long so it's going to fit just fine on a map just like this so when you hit U and hit unwrap you achieve something like this so we definitely need a couple edge loops like around the neck I suppose this can be an edge loop marked as a seam and then you get like the base of this tail here as well just to get to maximize the resolution that we end up producing see now the islands are scaled up just a little larger this is perfect so I'm gonna go ahead and I see like these faces that are sticking out here the, the seam that's there with the ear is causing that to happen so I'm gonna clear that seam for right now and just make this a seam instead that's a better that'll produce a a better texturing for us mark the seat hit a hit U. see now that that head is a little more continuous okay but the the ear is not really a separate island so I definitely need this and this and this that's also going to be, be a seam try this again A U now you see there's a hole where the ear was and the ear is separated in a in a new place so we can go one by one with these islands and maximize the area which it is allocated in this texture just so the resolution for like the body is as high as possible because that's like the main thing right there we want that to be nice and detailed and so that's good we could actually take the proportional edit and in vertices that kind of stick out like this you just nudge them back in slightly don't want to do too much of that because that warps the texture a little bit so just make slight adjustments if you have to as such now turn the proportional edit back off take this head island I want that to be scaled way up because it's much more detail in this part so I could put that in any old place I'll just stick it right in here as you see that's gonna work real well to unwrap it with as much detail as I can get packed right into that part of the texture now this paw I don't know if this is the hind paw or the front paw doesn't matter we just find a place for it scale it up a little and then we just like we can move it here little little bit there and I'm gonna take these vertices that are sticking out there slightly just warp those in a tiny bit not too much hopefully that was not too much take this island for this paw and we place it just up here is fine and we still need to find a place to put the undersides of the paw and the tail part so I'm gonna go ahead and stick this there into place and then these these vertices that stick out just poke them a little bit back in that way 
Now the underside of the paws, just find any old place for them in the, the ear part as well. Like over here. They don't necessarily need to be scaled up because they're sort of impossible to see at most point in times. As the model's animating, the paws, the undersides of those paws are not going to be very, very visible. They're, they're going to be kind of tucked away somewhere. So I could just stick them like right here, you know, any old place will do. They, they still do have some detailed normal maps in there so I want to have a little resolution for those and like the ear we can have in this part this this is perfectly acceptable but I'm just gonna scale that ear up maybe find a place for it like right here The tail doesn't really necessarily have too much information associated with it. So we could just stick that any old place, like... We could even probably scale that down. Maybe I'll stick it over here. See, now, this, this texture is as packed up as I could possibly get it to be. So that's great, that's wonderful. This eye texture, we'll, we'll get to those polygons later on in the process, so we'll, we don't have to worry about that yet. And now, I could actually go back into object mode with this, and go to the high res, and shift left click. So I want to select my high res that's in that first layer, and then shift right click to select the active object which is the mesh and I go to bake and then I go it's all the way at the bottom of this render tab it's at bake normals selected to active will be checked here and I bake the texture now the computer will think for a minute here and it's going to produce right in this bitmap a detailed representation of all those fine fine little um it's a, it's a million and a hundred forty thousand triangles worth of detail it's going to be placed like layered right on top where the texturing is going to be at just to have some detailed information as to how it's going to be shaded precisely so this is what we can achieve here it's not a bad normal map as you see because with the shrink wrap modifier we actually had that offset that sort of laid these polygons on top as if it was a cage this is very similar to the cage method of producing a normal map so I like this result right away I'll just save the bitmap where I can access it later and as you see we have a couple of materials that we can use for the texture painting this was the reference image we use, but I found an, an even nicer that's a little bit more detail in the middle section there for that one on Google Images. So we can go ahead and get started on the texture painting. I'm just going to create a new material. This will be the albedo or the diffuse, whatever you want to call it. We just have that right here. And I'm, I'm, I'm going to start texture painting with this in texture paint mode. So as you see it's pink. We have to assign this, this whole thing. Like these faces have to be assigned with this to its own material. Hit the plus sign and, and we'll get a new like eyeball underscore L. You just want to keep organized, keep these things named what you need them to be. And right now we could actually apply the mirror modifier just because this is the appropriate time to do so. 
and I'm going to go back into edit mode and I'm actually just going to hit one since I'm in orthographic view it's like it's a front perspective of everything here and I'm going to take care of this right eyeball texture now just create a new one hit eyeball underscore R and this one here I have to assign those to the eyeball R this one here we select those faces assign those so that's all squared away now we can actually take the selection of this here we can s select all those faces that are only allocated to that texture that material and we could take the box select in wireframe mode with the faces enabled we take the box select and we shift box select to deselect those ones so it's right down the middle we have to deselect that one okay so that's just one half and we'll just create a dummy material set for that one just so that we can begin the texture painting and have it like mirrored symmetrically on both sides so we're, we're only going to be texture painting on the texture set that's allocated to the left half of the model if that makes any sense now I can go right here and get the brush to be a new texture with the image we'll get the images that we have in that folder that I squared away earlier that's gonna be what we'll be using to texture it the, just these images I found on Google Images so this is a nice one because I can really appreciate how th how this is gonna end up um, giving it like a nice even coloring we add the paint slot for the diffuse color this will be our color information so so then we could we could get with the tools texture stencil and that brings up this kind of thing here we hit image aspect and then we can shift click to scale it up shift right click scales this up and we could go ahead and flip it horizontally just by moving that like this negative one on the X keeps it flipped around because we're working on the left s side of this model so we'll just zoom out a little bit and I want to visualize what what we're producing here so I go into this and this is what we're painting on just so I could see exactly what's going on there I'm gonna move this stencil right on top of this thing and you could control right click to rotate it slightly that's looking a little nicer go with the, the nice brush here and just begin to start getting all this color information evenly distributed across and this is what it's starting to make it's just painting out the texture very simple and easy we can right click to nudge this stencil over that way a little and just blend these patches in together here it's just a matter of rotating around and s slowly but surely getting these pixels onto this
Now, as you see, there's there's little parts in this texture where we'll just have to blend that in later and using Photoshop. But that's just very simple to do. It's nothing to worry about. We'll just blend like the underside there. And then the front paw. Now this front paw like where the light is hitting onto the image is just a little bit brighter there so what we could do is turn the shading down just a notch and if that's too dark we could blend that part of those pixels in a little bit later but right now this is kind of what we achieved so it's like an even lighting throughout the whole thing kind of zoom it up and just see if you could get like the, the front aspect with this texturing here with the eyeball centered there I'll have to rotate this just exactly and scale this image a little bit more very small, very minute adjustments. Excellent. So we can begin to add some pixels right there on the face. And on the ear. This is sort of what it's producing for us. That's a nice result. Now with the F you could resize your brush in spots just like this where you just need to fill it out a little. Now it's, it's putting in the whiskers, we can definitely blend that out using Photoshop a little bit later. But this is a very slow and somewhat painless procedure where we just gotta get like all these pixels into position just so that we can get started. just gotta get some of these black pixels blended out here just right along the foot the, the feet are always kind of challenging the texture paint because they're like a small kind of cylindrical object but that's just fine you just gotta work with what you have and eventually you end up producing a pretty good result eventually now coming back onto this part of the image I gotta increase the brightness just so it's even lighting throughout this whole thing and I could begin to get some of these pixels on that leg part to visualize what I got here. It, it just gotta be just a very rough paint job right now at this point in time and then later on we can we can really get this exactly how it should look in the final product using Photoshop it's it's not as hard as it seems so on this tail thing here 
we'll just get this thing scaled up and we'll move it right over here get some pixels on that tail started to get painted just starting right here then going like on the underside of that and cleaning it up now I can switch my image to get like the paw the stencil here this is what I can use to really get that information on the underside of those paws just found it on Google Images. It's actually a lion's paw because I couldn't find a nice one for a tiger for some reason. But I just need this. Scale the model up so I see what I'm doing a little easier. And begin painting this out. So that's there, and then under here, we get this lined up and painted in. All right, so obviously it is a very time-consuming process but in the end you achieve something that's somewhat nice and that works we can we can visualize what we did here by uh, getting this to be linked together with this image Yeah, so like, I can move, m just for now, move my lamp to that layer where my, my nice low poly mesh was, just so it's not as laggy, and make that lamp into a hemi so I could actually see. Incredible. So th this is sort of the, the main idea of what we achieved here. It's just a very rough texture. Obviously, it's very time-consuming doing this thing, but if you just take the time to touch it up using Photoshop, if you know how to use Photoshop, that's great. But that's sort of just getting you started on how texture painting is really done. And we can actually, we can also associate the normal map to this thing. Just create a new slot right down in here and it's gonna be body underscore normal and we could open up that normal that's already produced you just gotta uncheck color check on normal it sorta helps if you boost it up to five and as you see incredible Th this is sort of the main idea we can blend that normal map later on using a technique that I'll show you how to do in the, in the next video. Just to split this up, we can actually get like the information from the albedo, turn that into a height map, and then blend in the normal information that it produces from a height to normal program right on top of there using the red and green channel blending in Photoshop. I'll show you all about how that's done in the next video but that's basically it like if I delete this right now and then I can apply this texture to those other faces hit assign since they got the same UV mapping this is what we can visualize with all that so that's a nice nice result I like making my textures symmetrically 
just because it, it helps to just speed up the process and maximize like the resolution it's just so the textures don't have to be so large so many megabytes so I hope you all enjoyed this uh, basically just a tutorial about texturing normal maps and stuff it's Moist Andy see you in the next tutorial where we finalize all these textures and hopefully get started on the armature and the rigging and the white painting so then we could get this thing animated and have a nice time and bye bye